Alrighty folks, I got a little bit after 11 here, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to put us in silent mode and we'll go from there. The conference is now in silent mode. So today we're going to talk about hydrology and some severe weather impacts we're expecting to see this week. Uh, kind of a long duration system we're going to discuss anywhere from uh, Monday through Friday. and. Uh, Presenting today will be myself, Alex Lucambeal. I'm a meteorologist with the National Weather Service. Uh, we'll have Ray Nicholas, the hydrologist with the National Weather Service in Missoula, talk a, in a little bit. And we also have uh, Francis from the National Weather Service in Great Falls, who will be discussing kind of the hydrology aspect of things in Great Falls forecast area. So thank you for joining us today. So just to kind of get ourselves acquainted, here's the, the satellite imagery this morning across the western United States. Uh, the main weather player this week will be an area of low pressure off the coast of California. So this system is going to be slowly propagating uh, eastward with time. Uh, tomorrow afternoon it will kind of make itself to the east and be centered across northern Nevada. And heading into Wednesday and Thursday it will slowly eject northward and move into the northern Rockies. And as you'll see, there's a lot of cloud cover and uh, shower activity ongoing across the western United States. Here's a look at the modeled track just to give you a better idea. So heading into Tuesday, you can see it lifting across Nevada. And then late Tuesday into Wednesday, uh, the low becomes centered across uh, Idaho and Montana. And it's a fairly warm system, so what we're looking at here is 700 millibar temperatures, which is about 10,000 feet in the atmosphere. And the warm sector of this low, kind of to the east and north of this low, will, will have the warm sector, and there will be a lot of warm, unstable, moist air that will be advecting northward, and we'll see a lot of precipitation uh, develop in this area. And this will keep the snow levels very high, so we'll, we'll see the snow levels initially of uh, 8,000 feet on uh, Monday, Tuesday, and then slowly they'll drop, but not by much. As the system moves in, it's still a fairly warm system, so the snow levels are only going to drop close to 7,000 feet uh, by Thursday morning. As you can imagine, all of this rain onto the snowpack is going to cause quite a bit of runoff. Uh, one other aspect to discuss is the severe weather threat. So as this system moves a bit further eastward, we have all that warm, unstable air being transported. And there's a lot of vertical wind shear to organize uh, thunderstorm activity. So later this afternoon, this is the severe weather threat we're looking at. This area highlighted in darker green, this is a marginal risk for severe storms. Uh, this is the severe weather outlook uh, brought to you by the Storm Prediction Center. So the main threats this afternoon are going to be some hail and wind. Storms will initially develop across uh, kind of central Idaho and they will move rapidly to the north and east with time. So timing wise, uh, western Montana will see the storms anywhere from kind of 2 to 6 p.m. and they will kind of move off into central Montana, north central Montana in the evening hours. And once again, the primary threats are mainly wind, but depending on how much the atmosphere destabilizes, there could be some isolated uh, severe hail as well. And then kind of looking at Tuesday, we're going to also see some chances for some severe thunderstorms. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center has outlooked uh, mainly central Montana, uh, north central Montana, a little portion of eastern Montana as well, uh, for a marginal risk for wind and hail. Uh, s similar story, uh, storms will develop along the divide and gradually shift uh, north and eastward with time in the afternoon hours. Just a little background on what we're looking at for hydrology, th taking a look at the snowpack in the higher elevations. Uh, we still have a healthy snowpack for this time of the year, especially as you move a bit further north. Uh, so the flathead, the Sun, Teton, and Marias ranges still seeing well above uh, normal snowpack even in the mountains of central Montana. 
A little less snowpack as you move a bit further south, but still plenty of uh, snow to run off and create river flooding issues. Here's a look at the modeled snow water equivalent. This just gives you an idea of where is the water still being present in the snowpack. And as you see in northwest Montana, a lot of water left to be melted off in the snowpack. The good news is though, a lot of the snowpack is sitting above 7,000 feet. So we're not looking at a bunch of low elevation snow that's gonna be fast to respond. And there's still plenty of wa uh, snow water equivalent left in the Clearwater Mountains of North Central Idaho and the Bitterroot Mountains as well. So as this system slowly works its way northward, it's gonna be a long duration a precipitation event. Uh, the heaviest window of rainfall will likely be a Tuesday night through Wednesday night. And that, where, where we have the most confidence of rainfall being the heaviest is across uh, the Clearwater Mountains of North Central Idaho, anywhere from one to two inches of rainfall and along the Continental Divide. So the Mission Mountains, uh, the Flathead National Forest, and then for areas right along the Continental Divide, uh, there will be kind of an upslope flow component. So there could be some enhancement along the divide. So main story is we have higher confidence of precipitation being heavier in the Clearwater Mountains, North Central Idaho, and then across Northwest Montana near the Continental Divide. There is a lot of uncertainty, however, where, where the heaviest QP or where the heaviest precipitation is gonna set up this is a closed low that we're talking about as the system moves northward. So if this low does shift track just a little bit, these areas where we're seeing the heaviest precipitation on this map could shift a bit, and that will have a big influence on which rivers do end up seeing the biggest rises. So at this point, I'm going to uh, transfer control over to Ray Nicholas and he will talk about the hydrology uh, portion of this forecast across uh, western Montana, north central Idaho. Okay, we're going to go now. So as Alex was talking about with the, you know, where, where the heavier rainfalls are going to, I mean, it's going to be a general soaker all across the area. So, I mean, the good news is uh, we won't have to worry about any brown grass anymore. We have plenty of green everywhere. But it's going to be a, it's going to be a nice, nice good soaker. Um, not too untypical for low pressure systems to come in this area this time of year, but um, certainly um, enough rain uh, to combine with, with some snow melt and give us give us high flows across uh, you know most most of the uh, streams and rivers across the area. But we'll try and pinpoint a few areas that we think are going to be you know maybe more of a concern. Um, and I would recommend you know as we go through this you know, all the emergency managers out there to, to give us a call uh, just to check and see where we're seeing the latest uh, precipitation being the heaviest. And if you see any issues with any smaller streams in your areas, certainly we'd like to hear about those too. So we'll just start off and, and also start in, in uh, Clearwater Mountains over in Idaho. We'll talk about Idaho and then we'll slowly kind of move to the east and, and look at the uh, Montana uh, sections here in western Montana before we pass over to Great Falls. So it's one one location that's been kind of consistently showing that uh, it could receive a pretty good amount of runoff and, and and see a pretty high flow is the South Fork of the Clearwater River down by um, down by Skies, Idaho. That the whole drainage area, you know, I would expect a lot of small stream high rises. Maybe some problems with, with Highway 12 and Highway 13 as, as water runs off the side of the hills as we get into the intense uh, in, intense part of the storm with heavier rain. Um, and like I said, that, that South Fork uh, is we're keeping an eye on that. Now, as we go through time here and, and where these other bands set up, these, these hydrographs are going to look a little different each day. Um, but this is kind of the general trend that we're looking at here. And then as we go over into to Clearwater County, uh, we expect that, you know, the combination of all the other stems of the rivers there that the Clearwater River 
we'll get up to close. Uh, not expecting it to hit the flood level now, but it'll be certainly on the rise. And then Orfino Creek uh, should be on the rise as well as a lot of other creeks within Clearwater County. So then as we move over out of the Clearwater drainage into Western Montana, um, probably the location that's got our attention the most is right here in Missoula on the Clark Fork River in Missoula. And, you know, we're expecting the Clark Fork River to easily exceed its, its flood stage. Um, where that actually ends up is still a little bit in question, but uh, we're looking at a good healthy rise on the Clark Fork River and, and that will present some problems in, in the normal areas that, uh, that it does with some street flooding um, down in that Orchard Homes area. And so it's a healthy time, we expect that to, to be on the rise. Uh, the Bitterroot River in River Valley County will also be on the rise. Uh, we're not expecting that to hit a flood level at this point, but uh, keeping a full eye on that, that can obviously change as we go through time here and as we get some heavier rain in that Bitterroot drainage. Um, right now, the part for the Bitterroot as it comes into, as we was expected to be up there, you know, pretty close. Uh, at that point, we don't expect a lot of impacts. Uh, maybe some water in the buffalo field that side of Lolo there. And uh, in Mineral County, not expecting a lot. Uh, we'll, I expect we'll see some small stream rises along the, you know, some of the smaller streams. Same in Sanders County. Uh, as we go into Lake County, uh, the Mission Mountains, we'll have to keep an eye on those. Uh, we get some some more intense water graphic precip up in the mountains there. That can bring those streams out of the missions flowing at a, at a pretty good rate, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, and then as we go up into Lincoln County, uh, we're expecting some rises on the Fisher, Yak Rivers. Uh, at this point in time, you know, if it does reach over the flood stage, not, not a huge amount of impacts, it just barely goes over the flood stage, you know, the Fisher River. As soon as we make our way over into Flathead County, uh, we're expecting some rises, obviously, on the main stems of the Flathead River. The main Flathead River near Columbia Falls. Expecting it to go over the floods, that's not a real big impact this time of year because Flathead Lake levels aren't full and we don't see that backwater type effect. So, not expecting that to be a huge issue unless we see these things change and, and more precipitation falling in the the flathead then if it goes over 14 feet uh, expect to see a little, a little more flood, flooding occur. You know smaller streams will be an issue throughout that uh, flathead drainage as we get that higher, higher precip uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on those. I expect you know like highway 2 between West Glacier up through that Essex area to have plenty of runoff uh, on the road there with some rock and maybe coming on the highway. Then as we move a little bit farther south, um, you know, in the Granite, Fowl, Sioux Lodge, you know, Silverville County, you certainly expect to see some small streams uh, that may, you know, get up there pretty high. Uh, the Clark Fork River down near Drummond, expect to get up there close, close to the flood level. And it's not a real big impact. Uh, you, some, you know, a little bit of ranch land between kind of Drummond and Missoula area. Great and um, water, but uh, we'll, we'll certainly keep an eye on all those those regions um, for the smaller streams as well. I believe that covers um, what we're what we're expecting here. And like I said, this is this is a system that we certainly want to keep on, keep an eye on. We fall up to a certain point. It sounds like the dog wants to speak next. <laughs> Pass it to the dog. All right, Ray, thank you. I'm going to give control over to Francis now to talk about the hydrology uh, portion of the forecast in Great Falls forecast area. Okay, uh, see my screen okay? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, well, thank you uh, for uh, having us on this call as well. Um, and 
you know, just to uh, kind of reiterate what uh, you know, Alex has already uh, said, you know, the snowpack is definitely primed to release, and there is a lot of snowpack still on those mid and upper slopes, uh, especially on the continental side, but also on some of the central uh, Montana and southwest Montana ranges. Um, so I just wanted to highlight some of our, um, you know, uh, river forecast points um, here for uh, on our side of the divide. Um, and uh, as of right now, none of our more major rivers uh, or streams are, you know, forecast to go into flood state. That highlighted a few areas that do get close to concern levels. Uh, the, the Dearborn uh, River near Craig is, you know, gets pretty close to uh, flood stage. Uh, you, know, you know, within half a foot as of the current forecast. Um, the Big Hole River, uh, you know, gets to within about a foot of uh, flood stage, and um, you know, and the, the Marias River also gets pretty close to being within a foot of flood stage. So, you know, things are you know, definitely going to increase in the middle and later parts of the week. Uh, that, that's for sure. Um, you know, and as was mentioned, you know, any little changes in rainfall totals could that will definitely you know result in some changes to these uh, these forecast uh, heights. Um, but even if none of the more mainstream uh, rivers uh, and streams uh, flood, it is still going to see some issues on smaller streams and creeks, especially the ones feeding right out of the mountains. Um, so anything, especially not controlled, regulated by a reservoir, uh, we could see uh, you know some issues on those uh, smaller streams and creeks. Um, you know, one area of concern. Um, you know, and I was talking with uh, our uh, local hydrologist for uh, the Great Falls office this morning, and you know, he was saying that the current forecast of you know one to two inches, maybe a bit more in the mountains. Um, that's as of right now. Yeah, that is not enough to cause you know a lot of widespread river flooding. Um, what we would be concerned about, and what we'll just have to look for as this event unfolds, is if an area of heavy rain just sits over you know a particular basin or basins for a while, and instead they end up getting three or four inches of rain in that basin. That could definitely then you know put some of our rivers on our side of the divide uh, into flood stage, uh, in addition to the small streams and creeks. So we'll just have to keep a watch out for that. Um, and yeah, with the, the thunderstorms today and tomorrow, they, you know, any heavier rain, um, especially over snowpack areas with some of these thunderstorms, uh, could lead to, you know, could help set up areas for better flooding uh, with the Tuesday night through Wednesday night widespread heavy rain event. So we'll also have to be keeping a close eye on where thunderstorms hit today and tomorrow to see, you know, if any areas might be better primed uh, for midweek uh, snowpack release. Um, and uh, you know, even without any uh, widespread river or stream flooding, uh, we're still, you know, these rain totals, a lot of lower elevation areas, especially central and north central Montana, are likely to see over an inch of rainfall, uh, you know, between now and, say, next, uh, end of Thursday. So even without any flooding, we're still expecting some ranching and farming impacts, you know, in terms of flooded or muddy fields and perhaps some of those rural low water crossings, uh, you know, could, uh, could see some interesting gravel or dirt road wash out. So you know, even without flooding, there could still be some other uh, impacts that folks are going to have to keep an eye out on. So um, at this point, I don't think we are planning on issuing a flood watch for um, our area, but we'll definitely keep an eye on it. And uh, you know, if anything changes, uh, we'll definitely you know keep up with our uh, you know regular uh, communication uh, with our emails uh, to our partners uh, over the you know. Over the course of this event, so um, you know, right now, you know, this, uh, this is where we are. So we're just going to see, uh, you know, how the event actually starts to unfold over the next few days. Um, so that, that's all I have, I think. Thank you, Francis, for that. Uh, yeah. At this at this point, folks, I'd like to open up to a Q and A. So please feel free to uh, give us your questions. What about Limhigh County? Yeah, Lem Hike County, um, you know, we'll get some rain down there, but uh, looking at the, the Salmon River and the Lempire River, uh, really not uh, expecting much much in terms of, of uh, runoff on the main stem rivers there. Uh, you might see a few rises on some of the smaller streams, but, uh, you know, that, that Salmon River drainage, in the headwaters of it really didn't have a lot of snowpack this year, so... Um, and then, you know, the heaviest part of the rain is not going to be down in Lemhigh County anyway. 
Uh, so okay. Yeah, that's what kind of what we're seeing right now. All right. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, this is uh, Ed. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. This is Ed at Montana Public Radio. Late last week saw some rumblings of uh, inch and a half, possibly three inches of rain this week. It sounds like, am I wrong? That's been tamped down a little bit then. Hey Ed, yeah, you know it's it's a that's a tough question, but I would not be surprised to see some localized areas, especially in the terrain, get upwards of three inches. With these cutoff lows that we're going to be seeing uh, move into the area, uh, there can be some localized bands that set up where uh, the rainfall can be pretty extreme. So it wouldn't surprise us to see some of those higher amounts show up. It's just a difficult uh, proposition to see. Uh, to pin down where those are going to set up at this time. But the bigger picture is, you know, those amounts of kind of 1 to 1.5 1. 1. inches in the valley seem more likely at this point. Uh, I just wanted to ask, this is Matt Newman over at the Missoulian. Um just wanted to ask when um, you're expecting the uh, Orchard Homes region and, and the uh, Clark Fork region in Missoula to kind of hit the higher um, flood stage of your attention? Yeah, this is Ray. Um, you know, it's, it's looking out like right now on the, on the Clark Fork here in Missoula. Uh, we should start, you know, to see uh, the, the flood stage. The flood stage is down around seven and a half or so. Um, so that looks like it's going to happen in that, you know, late late Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. Um, the majority of the water, you know, making its way from the headwater locations upstream down through as far as the eventual peak could be more in that, you know, Thursday time frame. Um, and, you know, that's when I would expect to see you know, the majority of the water make its way down into that. Thank you. Any recommendations on how folks there and other places should, should prepare right now? Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, that might be a better question for yeah. the county, but the county, from, you know, we've been looking at this uh, yeah. pretty much all all springtime, um, that that area will yeah. have, a, have a flood uh, occur. Mm -hmm. So the county's really prepared. They, I think they've got sandbagging locations set up for the folks down there. And uh, the last time we saw this rise back, the end of April, I was down in that area and I actually saw a few folks um, with, with sandbags and stuff. Hey, gentlemen, this is uh, Peter Christian with KGBO Radio. Hey, Peter, what you got? Hey, Peter, quick question for you. Uh, on the forecast this morning, someone had mentioned uh, uh, hail. And, and strong winds accompanying this uh, particular uh, system moving through. So I wanted to find out if, if that again has been backed off, uh, as Ed had mentioned, or if we're still, we still might be expecting some one inch hail as the, uh, the, uh, the NBC Montana forecaster told us about. Hey, yeah, Peter, uh, it's a good question. It is certainly still possible. Um, one of the struggles in the forecast right now is just, we got a lot of cloud cover and ongoing precipitation uh, across western Montana, so as far as how strong these storms get, it really comes down to how much uh, sun we get to destabilize the low levels of the atmosphere. Uh, but it is certainly still a possibility. It's kind of a low-end uh, risk, but if a few storms do get going, they could have some hail up to one inch in diameter and possibly some wind gusts uh, near 60 miles per hour, and that risk area is mainly across uh, Kind of Lemhi County through uh, southwest Montana and then a bit northward through uh, north central Montana. Talking about going to the sun room? Uh, he was asking if uh, this precipitation event, in your estimation, is enough water to cause any uh, washouts or flooding on going to the sun road in Glacier National Park. Yeah, that's, that's certainly an area that. Uh, could you guys request the, the gal with the dog to put her phone on mute? running the machine in the back hills. Well, going to Sun Road, and it, uh, yeah, this is certainly enough rain to cause some problems on Sun Road. I mean, you know, 
I'm sure right now the plow on the road and you know, I, I would expect some like rock ball avalanche anchee type stuff to pull on because I'm sure there's still plenty of road up or uh, snow up on that road. <clears throat> hey, thanks a lot. Yeah. What's the next question you you all have? Hi, Alex and Ray. Thank you very much for putting this all together today for us. This is Colleen from Predictive Services, and um, we do we do have a Orchard Homes HOA meeting this evening, so I'm going to be sharing all of this that that you've given us and monitoring you know your hydrographs and your forecast very closely. So thank you again for doing this. Thanks, Colleen. That's good Thank feedback. You. Yeah. Can we call anytime? We'll do. Sure, yeah. This is uh, Josh Margolis, New Media Broadcasters in Haver. I'm just wondering for Hill County and the surrounding area, it sounds like the biggest threat is going to be the potential, the marginal potential for severe weather tonight and tomorrow, and that rain won't be as big of an issue uh, compared to western Montana, eastern Idaho. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, this is Francis here. Um, and yeah, it does look like, uh, you know, right now the, um, let me actually, I can, uh, actually, no, I can't get that slide up. Um, but, uh, yeah, it looks like for, yeah, for Hammer, I mean, still certainly, you know, over the course of the next several days, you know, places up that area could, uh, pick up towards uh, an inch of rain or so is what's in our current forecast. Um, but yeah, definitely, um, it, it's the, it's a thunderstorm potential. I think that's going to be, uh, especially today and tomorrow, uh, that will be, you know, the, the bigger uh, hazard for that area that's you know that, uh, both days uh, today and tomorrow there could be some storms that have you know some hail up towards an inch in diameter and perhaps some damaging wind gusts um then with the yeah the steadier heavier rain uh you are correct that that is uh looking more likely to be uh more over towards you know from the central montana mountains up through the divide and into western montana um but you know, a lot of it's just going to depend. You guys, if you get a you know, decent heavy rain uh, today and or tomorrow from a thunderstorm, um, you know that could saturate your soils. And uh, even if you don't get river flooding, there still could be a you know a, a localized uh, you know minor flooding or flash flooding uh, potential, especially you know in in town itself. Um, so yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. But as of right now, I would be for you guys. That's definitely I'd be a little more wary of the uh, thunderstorm potential uh, today and tomorrow than the uh, flooding later in the week. Sounds good, so just keep an eye out for any watches or warnings in the coming couple days. Yeah, yeah, definitely.